Okay, welcome back. Now in the last video, we talked a lot about simple pendulums, and we're able to understand the physics pretty well for oscillations with a simple pendulum. The only trouble is, simple pendulums don't really represent all pendulums that you might see in the like, real world. So, to compensate, we're going to be talking about physical pendulums now. Physical pendulums are just pendulums that don't have that simple pendulum approximation. We're not going to say that all the mass is concentrated at one point. So, for this video, we're going to do a physical pendulum for like a generic or general case, and then we're going to apply it to one specific example. So let's do our general version first, our general arbitrary pendulum. So we're going to say that here is our arbitrarily shaped pendulum. We're going to say that the axis of rotation is this point right here. We're going to say that the pendulum has a mass m. And let's just say that we know where the center of mass is for this arbitrarily shaped pendulum. Let's just say it's right here. Center of mass. Now, the distance between the axis of rotation and the center of mass, we'll just call that d. And let's just say that someone has already displaced this pendulum by an amount theta, and it's oscillating back and forth. So let's try and see if we can find out what the torque is and try and figure out what the equation of motion will be for this. Now, like before, in order to figure out the torque, we first need to figure out what forces are acting upon this. And although it has a very unusual shape, we're just going to say that the force is acting at the center of mass. And the only force that we're concerned about is still gravity. So we're just going to say that gravity just works at this point here. So our torque, that's going to be equal to minus the distance between the axis of rotation and the force, which is d times the actual force mg and then a sine theta just so we're working with the tangential component of the force now let's plug that into our newton second law torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration now for different physical pendulums we're going to have different values of our moment of inertia. And typically the hard part of this problem is going to be trying to figure out what this moment of inertia actually is. But for this general or generic case, we're just going to say it has a generic uh, moment of inertia, I naught. So let's just plug everything in and see what we get. So we're going to do plug in our torque, minus d m g sine theta is equal to I naught times the second derivative of theta with respect to time. And then we can divide by I naught and use our theta is small approximation and we'll recover the differential equation second derivative of displacement with respect to time is equal to minus dmg over I naught times theta which means this is going to oscillate back and forth with simple harmonic motion with the angular frequency given by the square root of dmg over i naught. So this is what it's going to be for a generic or general case. Now in different cases you're going to have different moments of inertia and different distances. So let's just plug out and try one example. Let's work with one version of a physical pendulum. Let me just draw that out here. Let's say that our physical pendulum is just a thin rod. Thin rod. Now, we're going to say that our rod is connected up at the very top right here. That's going to be our pivot point, or our axis of rotation. The rod has a total length L and a total mass M. And the center of mass for this rod is going to be smack dab in the center. So this is our center of mass and we're going to say that gravity acts at this point here. So let's 
start off by trying to find our torque. Our torque is going to be equal to minus the distance between the pivot point and the center of mass. That's going to be, well, if this whole entire thing is L and this is in the center, the distance is going to be L over 2. So minus L over 2 times our force of gravity, mg, times sine theta. So we're now we're working with the tangential component. And we can plug that into Newton's second law. Torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Now let's try and figure out what this ang uh, moment of inertia is going to be. Now, I looked up in a table the moment of inertia for a thin rod about its center of mass, about the center, that's going to be equal to 1 twelfth ml squared. So now we know what it is about the center of mass, but let's try and f see if we can figure out what I is about this pivot point right here. In order to do, to do that, we're going to have to employ our parallel axis theorem, which says that the moment of inertia about a this axis here, that's going to be equal to our moment of inertia about the center of mass plus the total mass of the thing, m, times the distance between the two axes of rotation, which is L over 2, 2, squared. So let's plug in this over here and try and figure out what our total moment of inertia is. That's going to be equal to 1 twelfth, oops, twelfth ml squared plus, here we have a 1 half and we're squaring that, so we're going to get 1 fourth ml squared. And if we add these two together, we're going to get is that the total moment of inertia is equal to 1 third ml squared. So now we figured out what the total moment of inertia is. Let's plug that in back up here, and let's plug in our torque. So we're going to get that minus 1 half, I'm drawing really funky twos today, uh, minus 1 half lmg sine theta is equal to one third, oh dear, third ml squared times our angular acceleration, which is the second derivative of theta. So now let's do what we always do and what we're used to doing by now. Let's just divide by this term over here and use our theta is small approximation. And if we do that, we're going to get that the second derivative of theta with respect to time. That's going to be equal to minus, we're going to get 3g over 2l times theta. Which means that this is going to oscillate back and forth with simple harmonic motion with the angular frequency given by the square root of 3g over 2l. Oops, l. Now if you notice, this is very similar to what we had for the simple pendulum, uh, just with a different additional factor of radical 3 over 2. Now, obviously you can do this with different shape pendulums and different distance pendulums, and you'll probably get that it's a different angular frequency. So let's just call it there for pendulums, but before we move on, I just want to give a brief overview of what we're going to be doing in the next couple of videos. We, we're wrapping up simple harmonic motion, and we're going to do some examples, or some advanced examples of simple harmonic motion. So, in the next, before we go into our next topic, which is going to be dampened harmonic motion, we first have to have a mathematical interlude. Essentially, a little aside to make sure that we understand all the math before we go into the next topic. So, we're going to be doing a lot of videos on complex numbers and how to solve one type of differential equation. So with all that, I'll hopefully see you in the next video.